This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by Matthew Macklin, nearly 48 hours on since probably the, one of the best heavyweight fights we've seen in a long, long time. Would you go along with that, Matt? Yeah, I don't think it was... Um... I don't think it was a, a stylistic, technical masterclass by either men, but I think in terms of heart and guts and will to win and drama and excitement, you know, it, it's the best in years, isn't it? You know, it was right up there. So, uh, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a, listen, we all got up for it. And we all, <laughs> and I couldn't get to back, I couldn't get back to sleep after. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a good fight from the States once uh, you've been, staying up all night and you can't get back to sleep after. I bet that was a, a lot of people. Just going through the first round, obviously Deontay approached it very differently from the first two fights. And we haven't really seen Wilder ever fight like that, going to the body a lot. But it, it did look like he was forcing things and you could see those things coming a million miles off. What did you think of Wilder's approach to the fight? I thought he had a good, very good first round. I thought he had a really good first round. He'd come out, he was jabbing the body, he was throwing the straight right hand to the body, which which... When someone jabs the body, throws the straight right hand, unless you parry it and come in and close the distance, it, it, it knocks you back. You have to go back. It's like, so it's, it, it, it was good. He, he gave himself time to get into the fight. He, he kept that distance. He kept Fury off him. Um, it was, I thought he's targeting the body. He's going to focus on the body, focus on the body. And then he's going to go jabs the body, right hand to the head, like he was setting that up. But I remember, that's what I was thinking when I was watching. I was thinking, he's setting the right hand over the top up here. He keeps putting that jab to the body. But then I'm thinking to myself, Fury's too clever for that. He'll know that that's what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? Um, but he had a good first round. Not a bad second round, but I thought Fury had a, was, had a better second round than, he, than his first. And then third, fourth, he just, you know, caught fire, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Wild had that start. Um but you could you could see that Fury was still composed in there and, and was gathering the information. Did you ever have it in the back of your mind as well that especially with Wilder coming in at two three eight heaviest of his career that he wasn't going to be able to maintain that pace? Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. So when when he came in at seventeen was it seventeen stone two three eight I think it's about seventeen stone. I remember thinking, fucking, I was shocked. The heaviest he's ever been, and you could see he was. Bulky, wasn't he? And I thought, he's coming for a shootout. He ain't going to... With him carrying on an extra stone and a half weight muscle, muscle requires a lot of oxygen, he ain't going to be able to... Um, he, he's going to strike. At some point, that's going to hit him. He's not going to... I don't think he's going to do 12 rounds like that. I think he's, he, he's, he's, he's gambling. He's coming and he's going to gamble on a shootout. He's going to put his eggs in one basket and he's going to jump on Fury. And, you know, this is a... Five, four, five, six round shit or bust type of fight. Um, and it nearly was. <laughs> and actually, he was gassed, but he just, he looked like he was gassed from like the fifth on fourth, but he just, in fairness to Wild, you've got to give him a lot of credit. He didn't half dig in. He bit down on the gum shield, dug deep, and he showed so much heart and grit. But, you know, so did Fury. Fury got hurt with that right hand when he got put down. The, see the leg stiff, and he went down, got up, put down again, bell went. But, you know, he Fury's got a great chin and he's very good. Uh, he's got great powers of recovery. You know, he, he cleared his head. To, you know, he, he got over it and then come back on strong. So, you know, I think I think Wilder was all was still dangerous. You know, even in the sixth, seventh, eighth, there was a couple of times he banged them right hands in and you think, oh, <laughs> you know, you're watching it and you're like you're feeling the shots. But I don't know. I thought I thought once Fury kind of recovered from it, got his, cleared his head and got back into the fight. I thought, I thought the writing was on the wall then. It was a case of when, not if. I thought he's, you know, bar, bar something, bar him getting caught with something here again now. I think he's just going to, he could see Wilder. Wilder was struggling. He was breathing heavy. His mouth was open. He was getting hit with jabs and, you know, Fury was driving him back and stepping on him, stepping to him. Um, it's a great fight though. Like it was a good, from, from, from a, from a, from an, a drama or an excitement point of view, it was, you know, it was a modern day cracker, wasn't it? Definitely. We'll talk about uh, Tyson in a second, but from Deontay's point of view, of course, after that second fight with Fury, his stock really went down um, and he was getting ridicule, ridiculed in the media a lot as well because of the excuses he was making. But I think everyone agrees that after this fight, his stock has really risen. 
So where do you see him with that heart and determination he's shown and with the obvious punching power, dynamite he has, and has always had, you know, the fights with potential fights with Andy Ruiz, uh, Anthony Joshua, maybe even Alexander Usyk. Where do you see Dylan White? Where do you see Deontay Wilder still in that, in that picture? Well, I think you're right. I think he certainly uh, redeemed himself since the first, since the second fight, but when, you know, all the excuses and the, Mad stories came out, and he sat Mark Breland. He, I think his his reputation hit the floor a bit, really. Um, but I think he's redeemed himself. I think you can't help but have admiration uh, for him in the guts and the toughness and the will to win that he showed. He, he showed great heart, and everyone loves to see that. Um, so I think he has redeemed himself. I think I think both men, even Wilder, even though Fury more so, but even Wilder, I think they both covered themselves in glory on Saturday night because it was an epic battle. There was no quarter given and none asked. You know, it was really, they 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 they, they did boxing proud on Saturday night. Um, Dante Wilder got beaten in a great fight by the best heavyweight in the world. So he's not, you know, you know he had he ends suddenly at the back of the queue. He's still one of the best heavyweights in the world. Um, Joshua Ruiz, um, you know, Wilder. You, you know what I mean? They're, you know, obviously, I think U- Usyk and AJ are, are, are meant to be having the rematch. Like, you know, does Dillian fight Fury? Supposedly, you know, the WBC, if that happens. But yeah, I think Wilder. Just, I think Wilder probably just. Look, he'll need a rest, won't he? That was that was a grueler. It was a you know he got knocked out and it was a grueler, so he's gonna he's gonna need a good rest. But um, I think then really all he probably needs is to come back with a with a, with an easy win. He doesn't need a, a grueler again. He's had a couple of hard fights there back to back. I think if he comes back and just blast someone out, it doesn't really matter who it is. Just kind of get his confidence back, getting back his name back in there, and then then it just depends on. What the landscape's like, what way the cards fall, what options are there? Well, he's he's still one of the best heavyweights in the world. He's still the most dangerous heavyweight in the world, and uh, and one of the most exciting. So even that, the most exciting. So I think getting you know a, a good rest, get back get get back with a win, and then let's see what happens. Yeah, and we'd certainly all tune in for Deontay Wilder's next fight. That's a that's a guarantee. In terms of Tyson Fury, um, as we said, as you said, Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua tied up. For a second, so there's a potential scenario where we see um, him and Dylan White box if Dylan beats Otto Violin and the WBC mandate that fight, which they said they will. So, how would you read that fight between Fury and White, Matt? Honestly, yeah, look, it's hard to pick anyone against Fury. I think I think Fury's the number one, and he'll be the number one till proven otherwise. Um, but Dillian deserves his shot. You know, it's long overdue. The man deserves his shot, and listen, Dillian will be going in there. Absolutely believing he's going to win. That's what he thinks. He he, he believes he, he he's got what it takes to beat Fury. Look, I don't, I don't think anyone beats Fury right now in the form that he's in. But listen, boxing's a two horse race and heavyweights. You know, he, you know anything can happen. You know, so um, look, Dillian certainly earned his shot. He's there on merit. He's a he's he's a, he deserves a shot as much as anyone, um, and has probably got as good a chance as anyone. So it's. Um, it's a good fight. Um, I hope it happens. But I hope it happens in the UK. I know Fury boxing in Vegas a lot these days and that. And I know Vegas makes sense for a lot of the reasons. Mm. But certain, fa- certain fights be- belong in certain places. And that fight doesn't belong in Vegas. That fight belongs in the UK somewhere. Oh, yeah. Bob's saying that, um, no, Fury's going to fight in Vegas, even if it's White, Joshua, Usyk, whoever. Obviously, Frank wants to bring Fury back to the UK. So we'll have to see how that one pans out. Um, and in terms of Joshua Usyk, of course, we'd hope the winner of that fight is the winner of, of Fury White. Um, we could have a scenario if Joshua wins that rematch uh, where we do get Fury Joshua. Given off their last two performances, has your, your viewpoint about Fury Joshua changed any map? No, I, I, I've always thought that Fury would, would beat Joshua. I just think, you know, that box him, you know, and, and, and maybe, maybe maybe stop him, you know, who knows? Um, possibly stop him as well, because, you know, he hits hard enough, doesn't he, Fury? I think because he's not, I think because he's not, we don't associate him being a, a massive banger. 
he, he hits hard enough, you know what I mean? He hits them, this, you know, still 19 and a half stone, big guy tall, punch him down. You know, he gets you on the end of that jab and then times you with that right hand. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I think, I think Fury's the number one in the division. I think, um, I think, <laughs> look, Joshua, I'd like Joshua and Fury. That's a good fight still. You know, it's this, even though I think Fury's the favourite and, and I've always picked Fury, mm. it's still... Joshua's still dangerous. He, I, th- I think Joshua's got a better chance against Fury than he has in the rematch with Usyk. I think Usyk's a bad fight for, for style-wise. I think it's a, he's a bad fight for Joshua. Mm. Bad fight. Where I think, you know, Fury, he may be able to come in under the jab and work the body. And, you know, he's, he's good at medium range. Um, Joshua's really good at mid-range, but he couldn't... He, Usyk was good at just not really letting him get that fight at mid-range. He was in, he was out, you know, he was stepping around him, crossing him, feinting him, touching him, not letting him get set. And it, it was a chess match and he drank from a, from a concentration factor point of view. He drained Joshua. Mm. And just to close off, Matt, of course, uh, fight week in Newcastle for you guys and everyone at Sky Sports. Uh, Eubank finally gets uh, out this Saturday night and uh, we've got Huey Fury in with Christian Hammer and Savannah Marshall also on the bill and, and Lewis Ritson in a really good fight. So you must be look, looking forward to uh, Sky's card this Saturday night, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, um, look, the uh, Newcastle's always a good place to go. The atmosphere is electric up there every time. So, um, you know, it's good. It's a good card. And uh, yeah, can't wait for it. All right. Well, listen, yeah, we will speak to you this week later on, uh, previewing that, that card live on Sky Sports. But yeah, appreciate your time. And uh, we'll see you up in Newcastle, Matt. Thank you very much. Cheers.